How's it going, everybody? Chuck Dietz here. Um, first, I want to thank everybody for your feedback. Um, one comment I had was about the audio, so um, this time I got an overhead up here. I'm recording it through the computer as well as my guitar, so I got better guitar sounds. So hopefully that'll make this lesson more enjoyable, or at least more understandable. So today, this is going to be part two of about three rhythm lessons. This time, I'm going to take us from where we left off all the way up to the solo break. This first part is a series of palm mutes, which goes like this. Last lesson, we already went over how you want to find that sweet spot whenever you're um, palm muting. So you don't want to be too far open, but you don't want to be choking the string too much either. So right about here. Now the other thing is how you hold the pick. You want to attack the strings with just a slight diagonal. You'll, if you watch other, um, if you watch like Dave Mustaine or any other rhythm videos, um, they hold their pick at just a slight diagonal. And I follow. I pretty much follow the same technique because if you hold it straight down, you get a, a scraping noise, which doesn't really sound good. Now you can also play with it completely parallel. That that isn't a problem. But if you have trouble at first getting across all those strings, you might want to try the slight diagonal approach. Also, I just wanted to briefly talk about picks. Now, normally whenever I have solo, I'm using jazz threes, which are really small and really accurate, but they don't have the chunkiness that bigger picks have. So I tend to switch between the two. Um, one time somebody told me that you'll pick one pick and you can ever go to the other one, but I don't know. I like being versatile. So for rhythms, I usually play with a big pick. Leads, I'll uh, aim towards a small pick. So just to recap on that first riff, we're going to play that part four times. I lied. Again. Two times. For this next part, all the strings ring out open. So we have... Now, the f one of the things that I was using there was the technique that I um, talked about last lesson about muting the upper strings. You saw that I was able to just go crazy and be like... And just be a goofball. And that's because I was muting these top three strings. And that way, you don't have to worry about your picking accuracy as much. Now, if you're just sitting down and playing like this, I wouldn't expect you to go crazy everywhere. But just in case you're wondering about how to keep that tightness live, it's just a good thing to know. Just FYI. The other thing you might have noticed is whenever I was doing that, uh, my open hit was an up pick. Now, I'm not really picky on this. You can either do two down strokes or a down stroke and an up stroke. So you could be like this. This is the riff under the crazy licky part. So we're going to start with A to G to F to G and for this part one small tip that I could give you is muting so right whenever right after you're done playing you can hear that I completely cut out my sound now besides me having a noise gate on 
I'm also doing a little bit of muting with my left hand. Because if I just keep the palm mute, you can hear there's still that uh, muted ring out. And I just want the note to stop and leave open space for the leads, the synth, and the drums. Just, um, um, I'm fretting with this finger, and I got these three fingers open. So just put them over, and that can cut out your sound. After that, it continues with this constant down-picked riff that goes like this. And I just ended with that little lick there. This is that lick played slow. And for that I go down, 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 down. I just fall to If that's too difficult, you could you could just hammer on that note like this. And then you could do all down picks that way. Next it goes into the second verse, which is the same as the first verse except the very end. Let me show you. And that's just a single note passage that follows the bass line that I wrote. For the pre-chorus, I change it up a little bit with some single note passages. I'm going to show you two ways you can pick this. One is all downstrokes. The other way, which I do sometimes, is I up pick any of the A or D string notes. So it looks like this. It's up to you on that one. Just play whatever feels comfortable. Then the second half of that goes like this. So those are all the riffs to part two of Infinity Maginion. Now before I let you go, I just want to give you a couple of tips. One, as always, practice to a metronome, especially during this, um, especially during the down picking parts, because you want to get that consistent and right on the beats. You don't want to be like. I'm gonna make sure your attack is right on, and that it sounds consistent. And that goes for your overall volume as well. You don't want to be fluctuating like this. So the volume that you attack the strings is just as important. And yeah, pretty much have to practice that to a metronome too. Just use your ear and make sure that it sounds consistent. Make sure that every down pick sounds like the other down pick. Nice and consistent. So next week I'm probably going to put up a cover video or some sort of guitar playing video because I know that I have a big general audience that probably doesn't play guitar or isn't really interested in learning the songs but they just want to enjoy it. So I'll say next next week we're going to get into the last part of Infinity Maginion then we can move on to the leads!